Hello and welcome back. Now, platform as a service and its counterparts, uh, such as uh, here the IAs and PaaS and SaaS, uh, which are nothing but infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, they all three really represent different ways. Uh, in which uh, Microsoft Azure let us, uh, you know, consume the resources uh, that they are providing us. When we looked at IAS, that's uh, infrastructure as a service, we looked at how it was uh, more of hosting model as a keyword what we have used, and uh, that gave us the most control over underlying the resources uh, where we have the operating system to installation, application, Tata, and runware, runtime, and middleware. Everything almost we have almost similar to our on premises, almost half of that we had the control. And now, uh, today we will be taking a, a look at a platform as a service. So, in this uh, lecture, we actually include more components managed by Azure and less by us, right? Because uh, if you see here, all these things are managed by Microsoft Azure and very less components managed by us. Uh, that uh, moves us to a corner, but uh, that also saves, uh, gives us the flexibility to save the cost. At the same time, uh, uh, it's one of the popular one platform as a service model let's have a look on it now when we uh, when we last looked at that IAS, some of the products within the Microsoft Azure that are correspondent to IAS were virtual machines or there may be networking or another resources so we talked about in the IAS like creating virtual machines maybe or networking now with the past there's actually quite few uh, few more offerings than than the IAS because it would be a very less uh, if you can you know look at but they are more powerful apps or powerful things which are available uh, and some of the offerings within the Microsoft Azure that are pass or storage for example so if we were to do a storage from IAS capacity in this we would rent out a virtual machine and uh, set up a storage drives and then we would um, give our storage needs to that VM and then we would uh, fill up that storage as a service but it's a platform as a service case uh, what's gonna happen is in this case we don't have to manage any of the server level con components so what we do is we simply take how much storage we wanted and uh, we start using that uh, specific story so in uh, as a platform as a service offering we don't have to manage any of these server level components uh, which we used to do it in the infrastructure as a service uh, instead we just uh, up the storage up and running uh, will be available for us so we just consume the data which is uh, which is available as a storage as a service uh, for us so let's um, less for us to manage here if you look at here it's very less to manage and it provides a kind of similar interface for us to build upon and let's remember that uh, word called you know build so we talked about the host and now it's for the building so uh, when we looked at IAS our keyword was hosting and we had most control of the hosting of all resources the way we needed with the past we are looking at the building on top of it so building on the top of it uh, will give a uh, under layer of uh, flexibility to build and use the applications let's take one of the examples uh, maybe um, let's use the sql database as the pass model so when you go for the microsoft sql as a database model you can uh, have a look on it sql component which is available as the directly available instead of here in the uh, in the infrastructure as a model you install the vm then install the sql and uh, that means you are responsible for patching here for that vm as well as the operating system level and sql level and their availability model also you are responsible in infrastructure as a service model whereas for the platform as a service model uh, we we get the direct sql so it's a headache of uh, microsoft azure or whoever the cloud provider in that case so in our case it's a microsoft azure so they are they maintain that sql high availability purpose so for us we get the sql database and we use the sql database so the same thing to put it into other way with the pass offering azure actually manage the sql administration for us and all we have to do 
is to just consume the database and that's the uh, that, that that's where it we get the access and finally uh, app, uh, finally our app service is another one example of a pass offering model of an app service which is just a service within within the microsoft azure to host it so you do have your maybe i'm going into the technical altogether like i said you know app services i said you know vms and networking so let me show you what exactly it means so this is a microsoft azure portal when you log in with the portal.azure.com you have this dashboard and uh, in the left side you have the three lines so this is where earlier it used to be you no know, docking uh, to this page but now they have removed that so you just have to press your mouse or click on the mouse here on the three dots that's where it goes to here and this is the dashboard what you get it here and uh, here you have different services so if you're looking for some kind of you know, services here like maybe a SQL example so this is where you search for all the SQL specific or uh, this is a list of all services where you can search it so let's jump into a specific service of what we are looking so if you are trying to create a virtual machine as the infrastructure as a model all you have to do is just go here to the virtual machines and spin up your the required virtual machines so whatever the uh, virtual machine name and the region all that you know we would be looking looking into it maybe in the uh, other sessions but this is just a fundamental so this is where you create your own virtual machines but we are talking about now platform as a service so platform as a service we also talked about a application model so what happens is you have the web apps within Microsoft so if you see all services here you do have different services so if I just go for app so you have here the app services so this is where you can create your app services so let's say I can create your new app service uh, that's going to be a platform as a service that means you don't need to worry about the hosting and other things so whatever the website name for example I give here maybe a Patrick Matthew example whatever the name so this name is going to be unique later point you change that to your own uh, service and you would be getting that FTP and other services to upload and do whatever you wanted to do it so now let's jump into the actual demo so we talked about an app as one of the example here so what happens is within the platform as a service you do have uh, you don't have a control of that hosting specific or the installation of flexibility what we used to have it in IS but with the pass you have that application is ready for it so it's our headache you know um, how we wanted to grant the access and what kind of application uh, should have the contents within that for example if I take it as the uh, one of the IAs whether uh, like Apache or IAs thing like that you know I can take it uh, what to be doing uh, what kind of you know configuration to be done uh, while I'm setting up my pass offering so if I just go back here and show you one more time here you see here uh, the docker container or you want a windows or linux so that all flexibility is going to ask you and it's going to uh, make you, you know more comfort like you know ias you want or java uh, or no or php what kind of you know web app it should be so this is what it's going to ask you when you try to host that specific application so that being said the azure will handle the complete complete IAS uh, configuration and the server and the OS middleware uh, configurations etc for us so you you can uh, you can kind of see already just from a from the description of these products how pass offering such as managing your storage and the IAS uh, specific things definitely goes to your uh, OAS uh, flexibility and that all goes into the uh, into the responsibility of Microsoft Azure. So PaaS is going to take a step forward when compared with the IAS to manage your operating system and middleware and runtime as well. So let's consider the case of app services which are a web service which is offered from Microsoft Azure as a PaaS model. Uh, that means a when, when we wanted to manage our own IAS we in that model we need to look at your IAS 
like a VM and the OS level patches and middleware runtime data and finally the application comes uh, into the uh, picture but here uh, that responsibility goes to the Microsoft Azure that gives the more flexibility for us and more uptime for us uh, more confident on our applications to uh, run on it I'm sorry if we went uh, any of the too much of the technical so let me jump into the uh, Microsoft Azure portal this is our portal and let me show you, you know how best we can create a one of the web application and configure the auto scaling for that specific web application so uh, what we do is we just create here uh, the resource group we would talk on that uh, maybe a resource group is a top level so give here any of the application unique name like the website URL like you know yahoo.com is not a unique so similarly have to more unique ID some random ID which I'm giving here and here I'm choosing the model that the Microsoft offers as a past model all these languages for your web developing for example Python Node.js and maybe ASP.NET so I'm just taking the ASP.NET since uh, it's one of the easiest uh, one to demonstrate and also region I have taken as the central US and uh, this is where you know it talks about the size of the uh, each of the web application how it's going to charge for us uh, like you know if you take it uh, p3v2 or p1v2 p2v2 so the charges would be 19 uh, 19,300 and uh, that's INR which is showing because I belongs to INR region but if it is a US so it would be showing as a US model so if you see here uh, what they are offering additional uh, ties with the additional custom domains and auto scaling all that so I'm just taking one of the model in this case and uh, I'll simply take maybe uh, 200 or 400 so if you see here auto scale in is you know 20 instances uh, you can go up to 20 instances 10 instances based on that so I'm just taking default one I'm not changing much uh, with the RAM of 1.75 GB and the later point uh, when I click on uh, create it's gonna analyze and it's gonna give you a summary then then uh, once it is ready it's gonna ask me to click on create that's where I'm gonna creating the web application that means it's gonna it test dummy web application which is ready for us on a .NET uh, framework based application will be uh, ready so what we do is uh, in the next uh, we once the application is ready we ask our developers to uh, develop the application right from the uh, web console or maybe from their uh, visual studio or whatever the tool they use it and once they are ready they would uh, start uploading by using the uh, by using the uh, FTP or they can connect directly from the Visual Studio but for now uh, let's create the uh, application once uh, once the application is created we think that the application is created and it's readily available for us and assume that your developer is developed so as a next step um, I would actually configure the auto scaling but you can look at here once I submitted this is the deployment uh, page where it shows the status for you so this might take maybe five or ten minutes so I'm going to you know cut off this page and directly go back to the specific to resource page and then uh, because the resource is the top level where it creates all the components uh, all the objects that we created uh, for for instance for this web application all this so this is the test uh, URL or the web page which we just created so I'm just going back to the not for the availability uh, let me go back to actual app so that's app so you see here in the right side here the URL also available so if I just you know click on that it's gonna open up for me so the application is ready as we discussed now as a next step I'm gonna configure my uh, my sc scaling out uh, for the number of instances to be you know uh, go up or maybe I can go for custom specific auto scaling this is where I'm going to uh, configure in the you can add the condition here in this case like adding another role like uh, maybe uh, for my uh, queue of the application is this and the aggregative of my average of my CPU percentage if it is uh, reaching to uh, maybe per minute it is reaching to more than 70 percentage uh, for the 10 minutes if that is staying at that level then I wanted to increase the count of every instance of this application in the background uh, by one uh, and cooling period is the uh, cooling is the five that means of uh, it's uh, f every five minutes it will go and it will validate and check for that and it will uh, uh, 
reduce that uh, once uh, it is you know cooling down so that's how I can add this specific condition and that would actually create me auto skill so all these options are available for uh, with the past model so this was just the example for the app service example now so pass also provides us much easier scaling experience uh, as experience in the long run and because of all these pros uh, with the past it's a it's a lot quicker and develop and you see you know how much time it taken for us to simply host an application um, and then you know it's the developer job who's going to develop this uh, this and then uh, since there's a lot uh, of less time that you have to spend on managing of any kind of infrastructure with app services you can immediately just get into the building of your actual web application with your developers uh, get get into hosting them uh, without having to worry about infrastructure to be created uh, where we used to do it in on-premises or in IAS. so it's so easy for us so but the again it all depends on some of the financial companies they are not ready to go for a past model because they wanted to store the data on their own uh, premises or maybe they're okay to uh, have the control so in that situation they would go for IAS model not for the past model so it all depends on the business case and business dictates what model to be chosen so just to uh, conclude or maybe the old pass offer is much simpler uh, approach than the IAS in terms of consuming resources from Microsoft Azure the key word we wanted to think about is uh, with the pass is that building applications to run or uh, run on your Azure uh, on, on these uh, platforms again from the app service perspective instead of uh, running the IAS model like uh, having virtual machines and configuring your IAS doing all that uh, pre-work is readily available with the past model that what that's what we have had a look on with the auto scale and other uh, powerful mechanisms and the application uh, model for pass so I will catch you in the next lecture on SaaS software as a service model I hope this uh, session is useful for you thank you